All right. This is Advent of Code, day seven. Uh, giant whale. We have steps. I see. I've seen this problem before. Uh, Okay. Uh, these squares, fine. So the derivative is now two x. I just try them all. That would be easier than trying to think about it, I guess. Okay, not too bad. A little slow on the draw there. Uh, okay, so what's going on? There's definitely a way to solve part too fast. Uh, okay, so we have this list of numbers and you wanna make them all like the same. Uh, and so in part one, uh, find, say target, so that minimize the sum over x and x of x minus target, right? Uh, okay, well, let me first talk about the brute force, I guess, and then I'll talk about the good solution for part one, because the brute force is easy to understand. Uh, so I think it's pretty clear that the answer, right, so the first thing is to find out like what the target position is, and then it's easy to compute the cost to get to it. Uh, and it's pretty clear that the target has to be like inside the range of this list, right? Because if the target was smaller than every number in this list, it would obviously be cheaper if you just increased it. And if it was bigger than every number in this list, you get a cheaper cost by decreasing it. Uh, so now we've done a little bit of thinking and we can restrict the possible answer uh, to the range of the list, which I printed out is only like 2000. So we can actually, I didn't even print out a lot of X, but uh, we can just afford to try all 2000 options. <laughs> So, and that is in fact what I did for part two. And, you know, it ran fine. Uh, takes like half a second. Okay, so that is like the simple way to do this problem. And it's a good way, to, it's like the right way to do it because uh, you don't have to think too hard. And thinking is bad. Thinking is very slow and you might make a mistake. So it's better to do something simple if it's gonna take half a second anyway, right? Um, okay, so that's what I did for part two. But for part one, and I'm sure for part two as well, there's actually a clever solution with more math. So I'm going to explain that because I think it's cool. Uh, which is that we want to find the thing that minimizes the sum of distances, right? Uh, and to find the minimum, find where the derivative is zero. This is a calculus idea, right? So if you like, I mean, basically the idea is if you move the target up by one, does that make things cheaper. If you move it down, 
I want does that make things cheaper, right? You could imagine the sort of search algorithm. Um, and if you think about that, uh, the actual target must be when moving it both up and down, like makes it more expensive. Um, okay, so uh, that's the same as the derivative being zero, but I'm not gonna get into that. It's not important. The point is uh, moving up and down should make it more expensive. So what is the cost to change target to target minus one? Target is too long, so I'm just gonna say t. Uh, well, cost increases, increases by one for every x greater than t, right? Because now they need to go further. Cost decreases by one for every x less than t minus one. Uh, and in fact, it's less than or equal to t minus one because t minus one goes from costing one to costing zero. Uh, and similarly, t goes from costing zero to costing one. Um, so the delta is uh, basically the difference of is like number of x on right of t minus number of x to left of t. Uh, so that means an increasing t by 1 is the opposite. So uh, the best t has the same number of x on both sides. Right, because that means that you can't increase, uh, improve the cost by just moving in some direction. Um, and if you think, I mean, there's basically only like, well, there could be a range of t's that work actually. Uh, but the point is like, there's just a middle, like the t, the range, the t's that are optimal are the ones in the middle, right? Where the half the t's are to the, half the x's are to the left and half the x's are to the right. Um, and so there's some optimal range, and you can choose any of them, and it, they all give the same answer. Uh, and this is known, right? The value is such that half the numbers are smaller and half the numbers are bigger has a name. That name is the median. Um, although you don't need to know that, right? It's just you sort it, and then you take the middle element. Uh, okay, so that's how to compute the optimal t without trying them all in part one. Uh, in part two, I imagine you can do something similar. And in fact, I just want to look at it. It seems interesting. Uh, so we want to minimize the sum of x and x of like x minus t. It's essentially this, but it's actually not that. Uh, it's like, fine, we'll just do the actual thing, right? Um, this is x minus t and x minus t plus 1 over 2. Uh, so I should justify that. So that's the sum of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus d. Um, this is, let's see, so like why is this true? Uh, Yeah, so I mean, I guess the first thing to say about this is that this is like roughly d squared. And the reason that we can know that is say like uh, half the terms, d over t terms are at least d over two. It's like one way to think about it, you have a half of the sum. Uh, and a better bound is that there are d terms which average d over two. And in fact, this can be Made precise, they average exactly d plus 1 over 2, um, which is very similar to maybe the most famous way to think about this, uh, which is like you pair up d and 1 to make a d plus 1, and you pair up d minus 1 and 2 to make a d plus 1, and d minus 2 and 3 to make a d plus 1, and you get d over 2 d plus 1s. Um, it's a famous way to sum you know, the numbers from 1 to n. Uh, so anyway, that is the like, cost function that we impose in part 2 because uh, that's what it says, right? If d is two, 
If d is 3, then you pay 1, and then you pay 2, and then you pay 3. So that's a total of 6, which in fact is 3 times 4 is 12 over 2 is 6. So it, you know, it works. Uh, okay, so this is what we want to minimize. Um, so that is x minus t squared uh, over 2 plus x minus t over 2. Hmm, this looks complicated. See, I'm glad I didn't decide to do math on it. What is the derivative of this with respect to t? Uh, well, we can use the chain rule. It's this over 2 times negative 1, I think. Let's use cancel. And this guy we said is uh, 1 if uh, something like that. Is it obvious what t sets this equal to zero? Uh, uh, it doesn't seem that obvious, so I'm gonna stop pursuing this line of reasoning. But I'm pretty sure if you pursued this line of reasoning for like 10 more minutes or something, you would be able to calculate a closed form uh, for part one, just like the closed form for part two is this. Or, sorry, the closed form for part two, the closed form for part one is this. But anyway, more important is that you don't need a closed form because the input is small. So you can just try all possible answers. And that's better because it's fast. It's faster than trying to do math and it's more guaranteed to be correct. Uh, so that's what I actually did is I just tried all possible answers, computed the score given that answer, right? Which is just, uh, this stands for choose two because this is equal to the binomial coefficient. Uh, oh, sorry, this is equal to plus one, choose two, but whatever. Really, this should be like, anyway, that's the sum of one through n. Uh, you just compute it, and then you take the one with the best, score, the minimum score. <sighs> okay, more math in here than, uh, than typical. But you actually didn't need almost any math. You just needed to realize that the answer was between the min and the max x, and also realize that you could just brute force the problem, which works for part one and part two. Uh, Okay, I think that is all I want to say about day seven. See you tomorrow.